today on Alaskan Ballistics, we have the Glock Model 40 long slide Glock, three barrel links, three types of ammo. We're going to compare and we're going to see what the velocity difference is as well as two different kinds of springs. If you think this is going to be interesting, 10 millimeter, stay to the end of the video. Welcome back to Alaskan Ballistics. Thank you so much for joining us again. Today we have three different barrel links, Glock Model 40, and three different kinds of ammo. We're going to shoot over the chronograph, kind of see what the difference is. Is it worth it to get a longer barrel with better chamber support? So that's what we're going to answer today. Is it really worth it? Is it also worth it to get a little better spring? We'll hopefully kind of dip into that a little bit and maybe go into better detail on a different video with that. So first up, our type of ammo, we've got 155 grain XTP. This is from Underwood. Pretty hot stuff. It was really hot in the last video I shot. Wasn't quite as hot in this one when we went out today. Next up, we're going to do Extreme Defenders in 10 millimeter and 115 grain. And then we have some weaker loads from PMC and they are 170 grain. And you can see right there it is their hollow point, 170 grain. First, we're gonna use the factory barrel and spring, six inches, dual recoil spring. Next, we'll use the KKM barrel, threaded, six and a half inches. You can see the difference in chamber support a little bit right there as the chamber support is a little bit tighter on the KKM you can see the the non fully supported chamber here on the Glock that's why I always recommend using a aftermarket barrel for hot 10 millimeter loads we've got the 22 pound recoil spring from NDZ it's been good so far and then we've got the 9-inch Lone Wolf Barrel, which probably actually has the best chamber support of them all. That's when I had to send it back for not feeding. That's what they told me is that we shaped the feed ramp like we did so that it will have better chamber support. And I can kind of tell why right there. So compared to the factory, here it is compared to the KKM. KKM has obviously got a much better, wider feed ramp for feeding the heavy Alaska rounds. All right. Tell me what you think is going to win, what's going to get the best velocity. Tell me why you think this video is interesting in the comments. Let's get over to the chronograph and to the range, and let's get out there and do this. Here we have the Glock Model 40, the best 10 millimeter in my opinion, and the 6-inch factory barrel. We've got 155 grain Underwood, then 170 grain PMC, and then we have the 115 grain Extreme Defenders. We're going to see how the fast they go out of the factory barrel. Here we go. No read for the 155 grain. 1506 for the 155 grain. 1530. 1188 for the PMC. 1173. 1174, not bad. 1768 for the Extreme Defenders. 1735 and 1764, so not bad. Let's try the 6.5 inch KKM barrel with the 22 pound spring. Here we go, 6.5 inch KKM barrel. Here we go, 155 grain first, then 170. Then 115, here we go. 1604, 1590, 1591, and I got a little jam there. I kind of held it a little loosely. Here we go, PMC, that was the PMC going in. 1217, 
twelve twenty eight. Eleven ninety nine. Seventeen seventy six. Eighteen oh two. And seventeen eighty four. So a little bit more with the six point five inch KKM barrel. All right, here we have the nine inch barrel. Block model 40, lone wolf barrel. We have the 155 grain, 170 grain, and 115 grain. Here we go. 1662, 1668, 1665. How about that for standard deviation, huh? Oh, within seven feet per second of each other. 1235. 1245, 1274 for the PMC, 1900 for the Extreme Defender, wow, 1894, 1891, wow, that was fast, those Extreme Defenders are going to be nuts out of this 9 inch barrel, thank you for that, that was the chronograph video, check out the Adam slide, some final thoughts, and we'll wrap this video up, thanks for staying. So here is our add-up slide. I will let you pause the video and read each individual thing if you would like to with all the information. I do think that the PMC stuff was kind of weak and kind of on the side of a hot 40 Smith & Wesson load. I think the numbers bear that out. The Underwood XTP had the best energy out of the Lone Wolf Barrel, even though the Extreme Defender got a lot more speed. That 55, 155 grain bullet you know, 40 more grains really did help the energy of the 155 grain XTP. Might be a great deer load with that barrel. Those of you that hunt deer with 10 millimeter, tell me what you think. Would it be going too fast and under penetrate? So here is the percentage increase the 9 inch barrel had over the factory 6 inch barrel with each of the ammo that we tested today. Tell me what you think. By percentage, it doesn't seem like it's that much, but by the time you get up to near 2,000 feet per second, 1,900, 1,800, 7, 8% is a lot of actual movement when it comes to feet per second. So tell me what you think. So our shout out this week goes to Slav Guns. Slav Guns, go check out his channel. He got all sorts of good gun reviews. He's got great scope reviews, trigger reviews. Absolutely great channel. Needs a lot more subscribers. Y'all go help them out. Tell them I sent you. All right, so final thoughts. I think they all performed about as well as we expected. I have gotten more velocity with the 155 grain out of this barrel before. So it might have just been an interesting lot number from Underwood that's happened before from Underwood. Inconsistent velocities from lot number to lot number. I do love Underwood ammo. It's good stuff. But just so you know, sometimes you get different velocities. If you're siding yours in with a red dot or something, make sure you sight it in all with the same lot number if you're trying to, you know, hunt deer with a 10 millimeter at say 50 yards or something like that. So make sure you do that because that, that can make a difference in point of impact. We did have one jam with KKM barrel with the PMC ammo going in. I'm wondering if that was an ammo issue or was that Chuck limp wristing it or what happened there? Never had any issues with the KKM barrel unless it was somebody limp wristing it, which I have seen done. And we got the velocities we expected. They were significant out of the 9-inch barrel. With the lighter weight rounds, they were a little bit more significant than in the past. We've done this. I wish I had some 135s and even that little 60-grain Liberty Defense type thing to try out of this barrel. I just don't have it. If you guys have any 60-grain Liberty Defense, you can send it my way, especially if you live here in Alaska. We can figure something out. That would be fun to see out of this barrel, especially compared to, say, a 10.5-inch barrel. 556 five, with the 60 grain V Max. That'd be an interesting video. And I'd like to do it. I've got the V Max and the 10 and a half inch 556. Five, I just don't have the 60 grain stuff for the 10 millimeter. So that could be a future video. If you guys want to see that, put it in the comments. I think this would be a great deer hunting barrel if you're hunting from a tree stand or even bear baiting barrel. If you're hunting from a tree stand and you're hunting deer, this would be an excellent barrel. Even the 115 Extreme Defenders would be a good load. For deer with that barrel because you're going to get the penetration with the defenders it's not going to over penetrate it's still going to do a lot of damage i think that would be a great deer hunting around myself so you guys tell me what you think put it in the comments god bless take care we're on instagram patreon facebook all that jazz you can support us that way 
God bless. Take care. We will see you all at the range.